Welcome back to another video. My name is Brent. This is American English with this guy. And the lesson today is chapter two of that free audiobook that I am writing to help you improve your English right off the bat, right at the beginning of this video. I want to thank you because I know there are a lot of other English YouTube teachers out there and you chose this video. You chose to watch one of my lessons. It means so much. Thank you. And to repay you, I want to give you a really good lesson. This is chapter two of the book that I'm writing called Mike's Story. The title may change, but if you are just tuning in and you haven't seen the first chapter, there is a link in the description below so that you can go back and read that chapter, listen to me read it. There's also a free PDF for each chapter. So maybe you listen to this video, watch this video a couple times, go read the PDF on your own, maybe come back to this. Repetition, doing it over and over is a great way to increase your vocabulary, increase your fluency. The way you, just the words flow off your tongue, that will really help that repetition. Poor Mike. Just really briefly in chapter one, we learn that his wife has left him. He has a drinking problem. In this chapter, we are going to see him arrive at work. But of course, like any other book, we like to see characters when they're not at their best. So Mike is going through a really rough time. And as always, if you see the bold words, the ones that are a little darker than all the others, at the end of the chapter, there will be some help because I thought those might be a little difficult. And you might need a little extra assistance with those really difficult terms. So this is chapter two. I throw on my work shoes and I'm ready to step out the front door, but something stops me. There are still four bottles of beer left in the fridge. I want to take a sip so badly. Those bottles are like little magnets drawing me closer, preventing me from leaving or thinking about anything else. I dig into my back pocket. There, in my wallet, I keep a photo of my two precious children, Nina and Lucas. They will give me the strength to walk out the door. Once, my phone was full of photos of my family, but like so many things in my life, I lost it one night in a drunken stupor. Who knows where it is now? Ten years ago, I thought beer gave me strength. Strength to step out the front door, face the world, and start my day. It was my constant crutch. But now, I realize it has become too much of a good thing. Maybe it was never a good thing. The walk to work takes less than 10 minutes. That's another reason I picked this apartment. I didn't have to worry about driving. My driver's license, along with my phone, are where all of the important things in my life have gone. Lost. It will take time, but I will bring them all back. I can't remember the last time I started work completely sober. The lights in the office seem brighter. The voices that surround me seem louder. The smell of paper and ink seems stronger. Mike, so nice of you to show up this morning, old buddy, says Jimmy, my best friend at work, as he gives me a good slap on the back. It was a rough night, I say with a forced chuckle. Most of my co-workers have no idea about the problems I've been facing lately. In fact, the only one I've told is Jimmy. When I get to my cubicle, I find a stack of sticky notes already stuck to my screen. That's the worst part of working and doing business in California. Doesn't matter how early I get here, New York always has a three-hour head start. Somehow I'll get through this day, but it would be so much easier with a belly full of beer. That's the second chapter. If you have no questions about anything that you've read, maybe go back and read it again, check out that PDF. If you do have questions, there are chapters below that will take you right to the question that you have. Let's take a look at the first piece of help. It's fridge, short for refrigerator, but Americans rarely ever say refrigerator. We simply say fridge. Sip, that's a great verb to use 
when you take a small drink. So like right now, I'm going to take a sip of my water. I can take a sip, which would be the noun, or I can sip my water, which is the verb. Guzzle is the opposite of sip. So if you're really thirsty, you could guzzle your water, but it really doesn't ever become a noun. You can't really take a guzzle of your water. Pretty much just use that one as a verb. Number three is drunken stupor. It's pretty much asleep or passed out because of alcohol. Hopefully you've never been in a drunken stupor. Number four is crutch. And I'll put a picture up of what a crutch looks like. So when somebody breaks their leg, they might have to use a crutch to get around the phrasal verb to get around, to walk around. But a crutch can also be anything that supports you. If you remember back to the story, Mike says he used beer as a crutch to get through his day. Maybe you have a best friend that when you have a bad day, they can be your crutch. They will help you out. Number five is too much of a good thing. And that's a very common English idiom. Basically, think of anything that's good for you And if you have too much of it, it probably becomes a bad thing. Even love. I'm sure most people like to be loved, but if it becomes too much love, then it can also get a little creepy and kind of maybe like a stalker. Water. We all need water to survive, but if you drink a lot of it, I mean a lot of it, then it could actually kill you. Number six is sober and definitely the opposite of drunk. But sometimes you might hear a sentence like the one written, he just found out some sobering news. His friend is very sick. So sometimes when you hear sobering, it means like it wakes you up. It makes you become very serious because the news is just so sad or or heavy. Number seven is show up. And it's a phrasal verb we often use. And it simply means to arrive. So the example sentence is, she showed up to the party very late. Number eight, I really like this one, a forced chuckle. A chuckle is a really small laugh. And if it's forced, it means it's not real. So if you remember in the story, Mike gave his friend Jimmy a forced chuckle. It might sound a little something like this. (laughs) You might have that friend that you joke around with like, huh? Yeah, sure. Okay. Very funny. You might even say very funny when you're being sarcastic. You don't really mean it. Number nine is cubicle. Again, probably best if I put a picture up of what a cubicle is, but it's a really small work area in the shape of a square or possibly a cube, which is where the name comes from, cubicle. Number 10 is head start. That is when someone begins something before somebody else. Let's talk about a couple examples. Mike does business in California. They are three hours behind New York City. So in the story, he says everybody who works in New York City has a three-hour head start over everyone working in California. Sometimes we call it the West Coast. Maybe a better way to picture it is if you are an adult and you're going to run a race against a child, you might give them a head start. You might say, hey, go stand over by that tree. I'll count to three, and then we'll both start running. That way the little kid has a little bit of an advantage because your legs are probably much longer than that little kid's. Doesn't that feel good? Isn't your English better than it was before? So why stop there? Let's get out of the house and go to a tourist attraction in Maine where you can learn even more English.